last night I made a book and when I got finished I thought oh that might have been a good thing to film <laughs> it didn't occur to me while I was doing it so I thought I'd make another one to show you how I did it in case anyone's interested but before I do that I have to show you what I got in the mail <clears throat> the other day I've had it for a few days and then I keep forgetting to thank her for it I got the prettiest card like a thank you note from uh, Sandy who came over and uh, it was is from YouTube and she came over last weekend or the weekend before whenever it was <clears throat> when I had YouTube over to my house to play you know and then she sent me this gorgeous thank you note which you know was so not necessary at all I mean it was my pleasure but I'm so glad she did send it because it's so pretty <laughs> um, and it she's on YouTube she's Sandy Girl 992 go check her out Sandy Girl 992 and she sent this gorgeous kind of um, muted neutral colored thank you note with these paper flowers they got a little squished in the mail so I fluffed them back up just a little bit and she's even got the, the little torn section with the texture thing underneath and I mean, it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful and then in the inside she has a little coordinating piece of paper that she wrote a note on I mean it's just so incredibly well done and when Sandy was over here, she was kind of, <clears throat> kind of complaining. Well, not really complaining, but she was kind of talking about how, you know, everything she does is shabby chic, shabby chic this, shabby chic that, with all the flowers and stuff. And she acted a little bit frustrated about it, but she does it so well. I mean, it's obviously, girl, I think it's your thing. I mean, there's certainly nothing wrong with branching out and trying other stuff, but, you know, if you have a style don't deny your style I mean go with it it's you know I mean it's obviously you enjoy doing it um, you do it well uh, embrace it you know so um, anyway this is just I was very surprised and uh, pleasantly surprised and this is a definitely a treasure Sandy thank you so very much Thank you for the thank you note. And see, I feel like I should send you a thank you note for the thank you note now. <laughs> but, you know, don't hold your breath because I'm bad about that. <laughs> so this is really beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> the book I made, I was, uh, you know, I did all these citrusol backgrounds. And you know, I got them, like, out the wazoo. And I thought, all right. I can just add them to my stack like I usually do or I can just get busy and do something with them. So I decided to get busy and do something with them. And I wanted to make a book out of some of the sheets, but I did not want to fold them. I wanted them um, to be, this is my prototype book, I wanted to keep them flat, you know, so I wanted a loose leaf binding is what I wanted. I, I am kind of I'm not really opposed to, you know, binder rings or machine binding. It's just not my favorite. Binder rings or, you know, poking holes and putting ribbon or whatever is fine for me. But it's it's sort of a like a, a quickie, uh, you know, just a quickie project, just, you know, binder rings be done. And that wasn't really what I wanted here. You know, I wanted something kind of cool, something different, something neat. I didn't want to do the binder rings. I don't have one of the machines to do, like, the coil bindings. <clears throat> and I've, I've gone back and forth on whether or not I should actually get one. And I may end up getting one someday if I can find a good price on one. Because there have been times where I've wanted, you know, just a simple, uh, quick binding and and I've wanted one of those coil binder things so I may get one but I'm really I don't know maybe kind of a purist or I don't know what you call it snob <laughs> I hope that's not the word because I don't mean to be this is just my preference is to do if you're gonna make a handmade book go handmade all the way you know do the binding in in some interesting way it doesn't have necessarily have to be sewn but it does need to be something 
um, in in my world, I want it to be something more than just you know poke holes and stick binder rings in. I want it to be a little um, a little more interesting than that. <clears throat> so what I decided to do is I made up you know anytime I do a binding that I'm not real comfortable with, I haven't done it a lot or it's brand new, I always make a prototype first out of just some scrap papers or whatever before I do the real thing. And this was my prototype book to kind of play with to make sure that it worked. Um, I'd done one similar to this years ago and I have trust issues with this kind of binding. So, um, okay, let me tell you what I did. Let me back up. What I did, first of all, was I went through my all of my backgrounds that I made and uh, pulled out the ones that I wanted for my book. Uh, not for my prototype book, for my real book. And the ones that I chose, this is the stack I chose, and they're the ones that had interesting patterns on the front and the back. They're two-sided. And um, I think I mentioned in the video where I did the Citrusolve backgrounds that, you know, there weren't really that many of them. That it seemed that most of them had um, coolness on one side but not the other. So I ended up with probably about 25 pages that were front and back. And then I pulled out another uh, stack of pages. Is this them? I missed it. No. There they are. Okay, I pulled out this stack, of, okay, I'm sorry, <clears throat> pulled out my double-sided ones that I wanted to use. Then I pulled out this stack that has just uh, coolness on one side, just my single-sided ones, and then the back side has just boring text or, you know, stuff that really didn't turn out that great. So these that have the neat stuff just on one side, I'm going to save these for collage. These will be good collage pieces or um, stuff to decoupage with. So that's what that stack is. And I had, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> another stack. That's this one. These are the ones that um, they have, you know, they're one-sided. They have, you know, okay on one side, some more of that, that kind of thing. But also those pages that I had played around with gesso because I wanted to see what would happen if I put gesso on them and then used them as a journal page, you know, so that I could write on it. So I just, this is just an assortment of um, those kind of papers with, um, you know, a little bit of, of cool backgrounds here and there and then some gessoed and then some, you know, some plain text areas. So I, this is the one I'm going to work on today to make a journal out of. And I've probably got about 30 to 35 sheets here. This one's a little bit more. And the cover that I chose for it is, this is one that I made the other day. Remember when I did the video on the um, using, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, using the uh, uh, fusible webbing, the, um, I can't get the word out. What is it? Heat and bond? It's not. It's heat and bond, but it's not heat and bond. Oh my gosh! It's you know the stuff. It comes on the roll. Okay, I wonder how long it's going to take for me to come up with the word for. Um, okay, it's feasible webbing. Anyway, ah, wonder under. There it is. Wonder under. <laughs> I knew I would get it. <laughs> okay, sorry. It was a little victory. It excited me. Okay. I used the Wonder Under to make the fused paper backgrounds. You know, I did that a few videos ago. And this is one of the ones that I made when I was doing all those. And then I just did the, it was with a dress pattern and some magazine pages. And then I just did this, you know, squiggly on the sewing machine. And it's, it's kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to use for my cover. And here's my guts. Don't want to fold them. Don't want to poke holes and put rings in it. So what are my options? Basically two. I can do a, a stitched stab bound binding or I can do a glue binding. Okay, the glue binding, I've done it. 
it works, but I have severe trust issues with it. <laughs> Even though it worked, like, okay, this one, I've done the glue on this one. I don't know if you can tell. These pages have glue along the edges. They're in there. They're in there good. They're not going anywhere. You know, I can open it, spread it out. You know, they're good. But I am just convinced that the whole thing's going to fall apart at some point. And especially the way I use journals. You know, I'm pretty hard on them. I add stuff and they get fat and they, they I put a lot of stress on the spine. So, oh, it's my move and word with, words with friends. <laughs> okay, I'll get that later. Um, so anyway, I just, I don't trust this. I, I need something a little bit more. So I am going to do a stab binding, just the traditional Japanese stab binding. It, it's usually called a four hole binding, but I'm going to use a lot more than four holes because um, I have stress issues. I, I need more, I need more holes because, you know, that's just it. So I'm going to do, I'm doing the gluing and the sewing. If you do this and you're comfortable with just the gluing, you can call this done right here. If you don't see any point in doing the gluing and the sewing, you can do just the sewing. Um, but if you're like me and you just need some extra encouragement that your book's going to hold together, then you can do them both. So that's what I'm going to show you is the both technique. So start out, gather up your papers. The hardest part about this, seriously, is the um, getting them lined up and clamp together so that you can glue them. If I had the right equipment for the job, this would be no problem, but I don't. I don't have a book press. I couldn't find any pieces of scrap wood that were the right size. Even I saw a video the other day where the guy used paint stir sticks, which I thought was brilliant. I don't even have those, okay? I have basically nothing. Here's what I have. Here's what I'm using. Um, and of course I don't have it ready. Hang on. I got it right here. I've got some, this is my little Ben O clamps. I've got some clamps. Now I have big, you know, heavy duty clamps out in the garage and if I had some scrap wood to do this with, I would use those, but since I don't, I'm just going to use my little book binding clamps. And then I've got two pieces of, uh, it's kind of a cross between chipboard and mat board. <laughs> It's, it's a little heavier than chipboard, but not as heavy as mat board. So there we go. And all I'm going to do is, first thing I do when I um, was sorting the pages, and this is just my little thing that I felt the need to do, I made sure that I got them all, you know, uh, arranged them the way that I wanted them, but then I made sure that um, the side the edge of the page that was in the original binding of the magazine I made sure that they were all on the same side because I want to do my binding where that binding was and so you may be asking well okay then why did you tear them out of the magazine to begin with if you're just going to put it back into magazine form with the citrus soft technique you have no choice because it dissolves the glue from the magazine binding and they come unbound. I mean, the whole magazine, if you look back in the Citrusol video, you'll see that the magazine is falling apart before I even start pulling pages out because it, it dissolves the glue. So that's not an option. You do have to rebind it. Um, so I just made sure that I had this edge. And since they do come out so nice and neat, since, you know, the glue melts, you don't really have to tear them out. So, you know, there's no, there's no really obvious ripped edge on some of them. It's hard to tell. So what I have to do is run my finger along the edge. Oh, look, I had this one wrong. It goes this way. Run my finger along the edge so that I can feel this is rough. That's where it was bound. This is the smooth edge. That's the outside edge. So there we go. So that was just my little, phone, my little you know, anal retentive thing that I did. Now, what you want to do is just stack them as best you can. This is kind of a junk journal type thing. You know, it's a, a, a mixed media type journal. It's not a perfect, clean 
blank page journal so you can get away with a little bit more imperfections but you want to try to get that edge all those pages just as even as you possibly can all the way across and then I just put these little almost worthless pieces of <laughs> cardboard <laughs> right along the edge and they really serve almost no purpose but I do it anyway because I feel like I should and I don't want them touching the edge of the paper because this is where I'm going to do my gluing and I don't want to glue the cardboard to the book so I back them off just a little bit back them off just a little bit and when I think okay I've got it pretty much as even as I can possibly get it and then I clamp it if I hadn't had 12 cups of coffee this morning this might be a little bit easier but I'm all I'm all hopped up on caffeine all right there we go all right, now I'm happy. Glue. Um, the kind of glue, okay, traditionally for this kind of glued binding and book binding, you normally would want to use a PVA glue. And that is usually your typical white glues like Elmer's. Um, I hate Elmer's. I, I find really very few good uses for Elmer's. It just irritates me. So, the one I had handy was this one, um, Aline's, this is the quick dry tacky glue. Um, it's a little bit thinner bodied than her regular tacky glue. And you know what, I don't even know, I, it's a white glue, so I'm guessing that it's a PVA, but I really don't care. <laughs> you know, it worked, it was good enough, so this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> And this is how I do it. I just take, okay, leave, leave one end clamp tight, unclamp the other end, make sure your little dudes are straight, even, lined up, and then put the glue on. And I kind of, um, you know, spread the pages out a little bit and put the glue in so that it can kind of sink down a little bit and then mush them back together and I do kind of make a little you know I just make a line of glue to sit on top and see it's pretty thick and that's what I want need a little bit more right here because it got soaked in and that's okay that's good okay now I'm going to reclamp it and I'm going to use my little clamps and I'm just going to use a whole bunch of them and clamp it back up and let it dry I love these little clamps. I can't remember where I got them. It was either at the Dollar Tree or at Harbor Freight. I don't remember. But they're just all kinds of awesome. Once you get it all clamped, then you just, sorry, you just want to let it dry. And I usually, these clamps are so awesome because they make like a little stand. And then I will just, you know, set it up like, rest that end on something, set it like that, and let it dry. So. Let's just scooch that one out of the way because just like on the Food Network, I've already got one prepared. <laughs> oh, that just tickles me. This is the one that I glued 
last night and you know my glue's dry um, I just did that one bead just like that you know just a nice thick bead and then it dries um, really good everything's glued in but you know since I do have the trust issues I'm going to go ahead and do a stitch binding too so for this this is a very simple stab binding and it's really kind of my version of it I think um, anyone who does traditional Japanese stab binding would probably want to stab me when they see how I do it <laughs> but that's okay because this works for me what I do these pages are 10 inches long and I want to make a mark about every inch but I, I don't want to come up I want it closer to the edge than an inch so what I do is come in half an inch so I made a mark Okay, first thing I did was I drew a line right along here. It was about probably an eighth of an inch from the edge. So I drew a line an eighth of an inch from my glue binding and then made little lines at a half an inch from the end. And then between those two half inch marks, now it's there and there, I just made a mark every inch and I can barely see the marks that I made so I really should you know what I'm probably going to go over those I need to get put something better on there so that I can see them and then I'm going to move the camera because we're going to drill the holes so I'll be right back okay we're ready to poke holes you can poke the holes however you want to poke holes you know, um, since I've got a fair amount of pages right here, I could probably use my, uh, you know, what you call it, hole puncher crocodile thing. I think it would go through just fine. But it makes kind of a big hole. Even the smallest hole is bigger than I want. It's a little too big for book binding. In this case, that wouldn't really matter because the spine and the binding is going to be completely covered when we're finished. Um, so if that's what you've got, you go ahead and use it. That's fine. You can use an awl. You can use a nail and just hammer those holes. But I've got a drill, so I'm going to go ahead and just drill them. And I've got a piece of scrap wood, and I'm set up a little bit weird here, but that's okay. It, you know, normally you'd want to have this in your garage in, a, in an appropriate vase with protective eyewear and all that. But <laughs> a piece of scrap wood balanced on the edge of a trash can in your living room is a good alternative. So here we go. Okay, I put a teeny tiny bit in my drill. It's, I think it's a um, sixteenth of an inch. And this is my drill, not my husband's drill. My drill. Let's just be clear about that. And now we just want to poke our holes and hope that that wood doesn't move too far. And you can see I made kind of a big mark. And, you know, like I said, since this spine is going to be covered, we don't have to worry about precision. So I'm just going to drill. In a drill, go ahead and this way I do it, I just drill down into the wood because at least then I know I've gone all the way through. There we go. So, I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of these. Okay. Now we are all drilled. I do want to say that if you decide to do the stitch binding without the glue, you need to come out at least a quarter of an inch from the edge instead of the eighth of an inch because without the glue, if you bind right there, there's a good chance it could pull through because that is right on the edge. So if you don't do the glued binding, uh, come in at least a quarter of an inch. 
but if you have the glue and you do the stitching you can just go right up to that edge you know an eighth of an inch so let's sew okay now we're going to sew I've uh, zoomed in kind of close so that you can see what I'm doing I hope it's focused I'm never quite sure you're going to need some thread I use waxed linen almost exclusively in my books unless it's just a small little fun book then it really doesn't matter um, you can find wax linen at Michaels and Hobby Lobby they usually have it over where the jewelry and uh, beading supplies are wherever the beading thread is that's where the wax linen is sometimes you can find it where they have like the leather cording and stuff so um, and it's not it's not expensive two or three dollars for a roll I think so you, you need some wax linen <coughs> excuse me or just a good heavy um, string if you're just practicing and you need let's do about three lengths of the book cut off a piece about three lengths so one two three I usually cut way too much but I would rather have way too much than have too little and have to tie another piece on then you need a needle you can use a, a book binding needle or a tapestry needle really the only difference let me see if I can find one of each oh I know you won't be able to see because I won't be able to get close enough but maybe well crud I can't find a um, are all of these book needles surely not oh here we go tapestry right here and I can't pick it up ah, okay tapestry needles are usually um, they have a smaller eye at the top and they're very pointy at the bottom and and you know if you do this you go ouch um, that's a tapestry needle it will work fine because you just need a, a, a big needle big enough to go um, poke through your holes good because sometimes you do have to kind of ream them out a little bit and and big enough to hold whatever thread you're using so tapestry needle will work fine or a book binding needle <clears throat> like this they normally have a much larger eye and they're blunt on the bottom when you do this you don't go ouch they're just very blunt so that's a book binding needle and that's what I use <clears throat> thread it and the great thing about wax linen is that it's waxy so you know it stays put now you start this is this is my book oriented correctly and I usually always start at the bottom and to begin what you want to do is you want to come up through the first hole at the bottom and that's that's what I'm gonna say I'm gonna say up through or down through up through means from the back to the front down through means from the front to the back even though I may have the book turned all weird you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that leave a tail a couple of inches because at the end you just need enough to tie your thread off and then I usually clamp it so that um, I won't end up pulling my tail through while I'm sewing and this stitch it's um, we're gonna go up this way and then turn around and come back this way these stitches that we go up are gonna go um, hold a hole like this and then we come back this way we're gonna go around the spine like this <clears throat> so very simple very I mean it's almost intuitive once you get started and you know you don't have to be a, a, a sewer person <laughs> to get this because <laughs> I'm not a sewer person and I can still do this because uh, all you have to do is just do it you have to do it two or three times but just do it you can do it I promise okay we came up through the first hole at the bottom we're gonna go around the bottom edge like that and come back up through the same hole 
and all you have to do is when you go up through a hole that you've already been through just be careful that you don't split your thread make sure your needle does not go through the middle of your thread just like that pull tight but not so tight that you tear your paper you can tear your paper so there we go now we're just going to sew down through up through down through up through every hole go to the next hole go down through go to the next hole and go up through dang memory card okay I'm ordering a new memory card because this you know every half hour thing it's just not working for me so I'm gonna get me a great big one that will hold like four hours of video I should tell you what I'm doing here down through now when you get to the end where we went down through our last hole now you want to come up around the end like we did down there and go down through the same hole Just like that. I'll make sure everything is pulled tight, but not so much that it's going to tear your paper. Tighten it up just a little bit. Okay. So, traveling from bottom to top, you'll end up with that. Now it's time to go back down and do the spine and fill in the gaps. And again, it's going to be sort of intuitive. Once you start, you, you'll kind of see. The goal here, you just want to remember that there will be no double threads on any of the stitches. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not going to go back around like that and have two threads there in order to move. We're not going to do that. So if you've got, you know, double threads on any of your stitches, you've made a boo-boo somewhere. Back up and fix it. So, going to this time go around the spine. This is the back of the book. Here's our thread. Just bring it up and go down through this same little busy hole. It's gotten a lot of action so far. And pull it tight. So now we have a little stitch on the spine. Now we need a little stitch on the next spine, but to get there, we have to fill in this gap. So let's go up through. Oh. <laughs> wow, I broke my needle. Like how often does that happen? Okay, let me get some pliers and yank that out and then we're just going to carry on like that didn't even happen. Okay, wow I've never broken a needle before. I break threads all the time but never needles. Um, when you're traveling back up this way you're going through holes that you know have already got thread in them so it's a tight fit. Um, I switched out to actually a smaller needle with a smaller eye, which makes it more flimsy, so it may break too, but hopefully it'll get through the holes a little bit easier. So, carrying on, come up through, I was worried there for a minute, weren't you? Back around and up through again. And this is where you really have to watch about splitting your threads because you got a lot of threads going through the same hole. Okay, there we go. Now we've got two spine stitches. And you see it's, it's intuitive because it's very obvious where you go next. You're filling in that gap. So down through. And if you need a pair of pliers to help you pull the needle through, 
you can use it because they, you know, they get slippery and the wax from the linen gets on your hands. So you just got to do what you got to do. We are, as we work our way down, we're filling in each of the gaps on both sides and we're doing a stitch around the spine. No double threads on any of our stitches. Okay, we're up to our last stitch. We're in the back side here. We've got one gap left. So we go up through, fill in our gap. Now we're going to go around. Normally we would go up through again, but that would put my tail here, and I don't want it here. I want it here so we don't go up through. We just go around and we tie it off and then that will complete our binding. And I usually kind of, I will run this underneath here like that just to hold it secure. So these are kind of right there. Let's pull this off and then just tie a good knot, whatever kind of knot you normally tie. Square knot, granny knot, fancy nautical knot, whatever. The This is where wax linen is so awesome because it kind of sticks to itself. So it um, doesn't come untied very often. And then I just kind of push those down. And we're going to have this covered anyway, so we're good. So there we go. That is the traditional Japanese stab binding. Four hole binding with um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes. We're done. Okay. All that's left to do now is to cover this. And um, let's check on our other um, set. This this really wouldn't be a signature in this case. It would be a text block. So yeah, our text block is still not quite dry. So I'm going to leave it be. And let's just make a cover for this one. And what I want to do, okay, this is a really good time to use up some of your painted papers and and, you know, backgrounds and things that you made for a reason that you're not sure of. Well, this is that reason. Because <laughs> these work really well for this. So, oh, okay. I'm going to have to uh, refocus. Hang on.